What's up, TBS crew? It's your boy Steph back with another reaction. This time we have Creepypasta Jr. I have seen the same man for 20 years uploaded February 23rd, 2019. Now, down in the description will be a link to Creepypasta Jr.'s channel along with the link to this original video so y'all can see it for yourselves without my commentary. Also, will be links to all of my social medias. Get at your boy and see the personal life that I don't upload to YouTube. Without further ado, let's get into it. I have seen the same man for 20 years. Yeah. And the description says he is always there. <laughs> My life, for lack of a better term, is normal. Except for one small detail. Small. For as long as I can remember, I've seen the same man intermittently throughout my life. Before you ask, no, I do not know this man. Nor do I know why he has been appearing throughout my life. Oh, that's even worse. I remember the first time I saw him vividly. I was young, maybe eight or nine. My mother had taken me to a nearby park to play with some friends. After carrying on some time, climbing the jungle gyms and launching ourselves off the swing sets, we chose the slides as our next destination for fun. I had just climbed to the top of the tallest slide in the park and was feeling empowered as I could see the entire park from way up there. My friends all waited at the base of the slide. I could see my mother reading her book on a nearby bench. Numerous people walking along the fence surrounding the park. Except for one person. Someone was standing on the other side of the fence, and people seemed to simply walk by without noticing him. He was dressed in an old-fashioned suit, something you would see a grandfather wear. It looked weathered, but not unkempt, like it was the only thing he had to wear for decades. He stood with his hands resting on a cane in front of him, I thought perhaps he had taken his grandchild to play at the park. But then I looked up to his face, and I nearly fell off the top of the slide in the process. His face was a complete and utter blur. It looked like when someone would shake their head from left to right rapidly. Seeing this gave me a sense of vertigo, and I nearly toppled from the slide but quickly steadied myself. When I regained my balance, I looked up. The man was gone. There was nothing obstructing the view of the fence, and I looked left and right to catch a glimpse of the man. But he had vanished. In thin air. By this point, my friends were becoming annoyed at my refusal to slide down, so I acquiesced. When I arrived at the bottom, I asked my friends if they had seen the man by the fence. What man? And they told me they hadn't. See? See? The day ended and I was taken home. The next time I saw the man was quite a few years later. I was sitting through yet another boring lecture in my science class. My teacher was rambling on about cells and proteins when I let my gaze wander from the class to out of the nearby window. Directly outside that window is a large empty field that extends quite a way in each direction. So, when I saw someone standing directly in the center of it, my attention was grasped. When I saw him, my memories of the park that day rushed back into my mind. I watched as the man stood there. His suit hadn't aged a day, still weathered and dark. He stood in the same fashion as I remembered, his hands in front of him atop an old cane. When I saw his face, that same feeling of vertigo returned and I felt dizzy, sitting in my desk. I was nearly about to fall out of my chair when my teacher slammed a book on my desk. This made me jump so bad I did end up falling out of my seat anyway. People laughed, The didn't class they? cackled as the teacher remarked about paying attention in class. I hastily returned to my seat and as I was sitting down, I gave one last passing glance out the window. I would have laughed too. The field was empty. Before this event, I hadn't given any thought to the paranormal. You're haunted as Creepy, fuck. Creepy, unexplained things never really appealed to me. You're haunted. But after that day, I began researching more and more about this type of thing. I bet. 
I studied multiple sources regarding ghosts, ghouls, and demons. Goblins. Even fictional monsters. Witches. But nothing sounded close enough to what I was experiencing. It was possible the man could have been a ghost. But from what I read, they usually latch onto a specific person or place that was a part of their lives. I had never known this man before in my life, and he was appearing in random places. The next time that I saw this man was another few years later. I had finished high school and had gotten a job working as a security guard for a corporate building in the city. We have quite a few guards on staff, so we regularly switch positions every week. One week, some of us would be in the lobby of the building itself. The next, we would be on one of the upper levels. The following, we'd be in the little shack inside the private parking garage attached to the building. It had been my turn to guard the parking garage with another guard. One of us usually stays in the shack that has a few camera feeds throughout the garage, while the other patrols around in a small golf cart. The other guard had just left to make his rounds in the cart, and I was left alone in the shack. I was browsing the internet on my phone, giving the occasional glance to the monitors when he appeared. This time, when I saw him, I felt my blood constrict in my veins. He was on one of the camera feeds. The man was standing a few feet away from the door to the shack. While that was unnerving by itself, it wasn't wholly the reason I was feeling an icy chill throughout my veins. Through the camera feed, I could see his face clearly. I'm not sure why the camera removed the blurred visage, but I wish it hadn't. His face was a mix of agony and fear. The skin of his face was pale, like he was wearing white makeup. His mouth extended like he was screaming endlessly. His eyes were rolled to the back of his head. Oh. His body never moved, however. He remained as he always had, standing rigid with his hands upon his cane. He all fucked up. I found myself unintentionally holding my breath as I watched him standing there. Then, suddenly, he tilted his head up towards the camera. Oh. It was like he knew I was watching him. He does. I quickly turned away from the monitor and the second I did, he was the gone. door to the shack opened. I screamed as my coworker entered. He asked me what was wrong, and I told him nothing. And just like before, all the cameras were empty. He was gone. I even peeked my head out of the door as it shut to make sure the coast was clear. <sighs> the last time I saw this man was a few days ago. You're haunted as fuck, bro. I had gotten home late from work. The clock was already nearing midnight by the time I tiredly stumbled through the door. Oh, bad. I hardly had the energy to eat, let alone cook something, so you, I chose instead to just head to bed. You gonna get grab breakfast in the morning. Almost immediately after my head struck the pillow, I was out like a light. I remember having an extremely vivid nightmare that night. I was running through the street of an empty neighborhood. The houses, roads, and even the sky were greatly desaturated. Everything was almost in black and white all around me. Damn near. I wasn't sure what I was running from until I glanced back. The man who had been stalking me my entire life was now chasing me. He wasn't running with his legs, but rather hovering after me. He maintained his position while his feet seemed to drag beneath him. His face was still blurred in my dreams even after seeing what he truly looked like. Even though I was running as fast as I could, the man was still gaining on me. It started to feel like I was running through quicksand. Then, I felt a hand rest upon my shoulder. <laughs> and when I turned, the man's blurred face was mere inches away from my own. His face slowly started to unblur. And seeing that tormented expression again, sent terror radiating throughout my entire body. His eyes rolled down from the back of his head. Oh. They were greatly bloodshot and strained. God damn. It looked like he was about to take a bite out of my face at any moment. Probably will. I reflexively shut my eyes, trying vainly to prepare myself for whatever was about to happen. You finna get got. When I opened them again, 
was back in my bed in my darkened house. <laughs> I sat upright, gasping desperately for air. And after a moment or two, I was finally able to calm myself down, thinking it was nothing more than a nightmare. I got up from bed and grabbed myself a glass of water from the kitchen. Once I finished gulping down the glass, I exhaled a relieving breath. Then, I glanced out of my living room window and dropped the glass from my hand. The sound of the glass shattering reverberated throughout my living room, but I was more focused on him. He was standing there, directly on the other side of my window, his blurred face nearly touching the glass in front of him. I did the only thing I could think of. Which is? And that was to run into my bedroom and hide under the covers like a child. I waited underneath the covers all night until the sun started to come up. When it did, I crawled out from my bed and searched for my surroundings. The man was nowhere to be found. For now. It's been a few days since then, and I can't stop thinking about this strange situation I have found myself in. I bet. I haven't told anyone about the man who has been appearing throughout my life for nearly 20 years. But I feel I must tell someone. He appears every few years or so. And I'm hoping that will be the case again this time. I wish I knew what he was. I wish I knew why he had been following me my whole life. I wish he would just leave me alone for good. But I doubt that's going to happen. Right. <laughs> there is one thing I have noticed, however. Which is? Each time I see this man... He has gotten closer and closer to me. Oh, hell. I fear the next time I see him, he will be close enough to grab me like he did in my dream. Only this time, I won't be able to wake up. If any of you out there see a strange person following you with a blurry face, someone who other people can't seem to see, then I'm sorry. He has moved on from me and is now after you. Maybe I'll be you'll find a way to stop him. Before it's too late. But as for me, I am at a loss. It's too late. And I am running out of options. <laughs> I love how a lot of the times the endings be so dramatic. <laughs> this is why I love Creepypasta Jr. <laughs> Oh, shit. If someone's been following you for such a long time, bro, you need to seek treatment. You need to seek help. <laughs> Hell no. The next time you see him, he might be close enough to grab you like he did in your dream. And he's not going to let you go. Man, he going to be... Clapping the fuck out of your cheeks. <laughs> Man, he finna be plowing you. <laughs> Pounding. <laughs> this was a creepy story. It's a creepy pasta. But this shit was comical. This was funny. <laughs> this man is just following you. Through all the phases of your fucking life. And every time you see him every couple of years, he gets closer. <laughs> you don't know who he is. You don't know where he came from. And you don't know why he's following you. You just know that you run into him every couple of years. His suit doesn't change. His face, for some fucking reason, is distorted. But sometimes it's clear. But I don't know, man. <laughs> this shit was funny to me. Like, <laughs> this motherfucker said, I'm at a loss. <laughs> it's too late for me. But it's not too late for you. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna close the video because this shit is funny. What did you guys think of the video? What did you guys think of my reaction? Leave all your feedback down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope you liked it. 
If you liked it, leave a like, leave a comment, and share the video. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel and tap that bell icon so you will be notified every time your boy Steph drop new content, which I do seven times a week. That's all I got for y'all this time around. Your boy Steph is out.